In this video, I want to show you something um, about one of the vintage Conor fountain pens. And a couple of people have asked me, I have a video up about filling them from an, a film container filled with ink when your ink bottle is too low on ink. And a couple of people have asked me to show actually manipulating the parts of the pen when I'm doing that, when I'm filling it. So this is a pen that's already filled. Um, and I want to show you again the parts. So here's your, you take your cap off. The nib, you can unscrew the nib with a nib key. The older pens came with a gold nib key. I happen to have a replacement nib in this particular pen. And then you want to take off the bottom section. And what that exposes is a little uh, like sunscrew thing. And that is what you turn to fill the pen or empty the pen out. Now this one is already writing. This is a size one. Um, and I had purchased a couple of pens together and I need to get the number three um, writing. So here is the end section I already took off and the cap over here on the tray and I had taken the nib out. This is an, an original tulip nib and I had taken this nib out and I just put it through the ultrasonic cleaner this has green plastic near the weight, um, so, but a lot of times people leave ink in the pens and you want to make sure you have um, a plastic cover on the weight and not dried ink. So I'm just going to screw the nib back into the barrel. And I'm going to fill this pen with a mixture of, um, I threw a bunch of FW acrylic inks together um, to make a writing ink for myself and it's green. It's called Forest. And what you do again is turn the thumb screw all the way to the left, which is where I have it now. And then when I put it into the ink, I'm going to submerge the pen to about here. I'm going to then turn this to the right which will draw ink up into the barrel but because it won't fill completely the first time I'm then going to turn it to the left and do that a couple of times. So when you turn it to the left you're forcing air uh, through. There's probably a piston in there that pushes the piston this way, you're forcing any air out and when you turn it to the right you're pulling ink in. I think you'll be able to see this. Um, so I've submerged it. I twist that little thumb screw to the right. And then I'm going to, even though it's going to, um, you don't want to get hairs or fibers around it. It's going to push the ink out, obviously, a little bit when you do it again and push it to the left. But you want to get a good fill in the barrel. So then I'm just going to wipe that off. And this is a size 3, as I said. I may not need the bulb syringe to get it flowing, and I don't. Just kind of scribbling here. <coughs> so it's that easy. Size 3 is great. Um, a lot of people don't like the larger nibs, but a 3 is great. Yeah, um, I'm making um, 
They're like ACEO um, artist cards, but I'm making a set of playing cards. And I need the bigger nib to do some of the characters on there. So that's all you have to do to fill a vintage Koenor. Now, because I was doing this anyway, I want to show you something else. Um, this is another ink I mixed. This is Noodlers that I mixed into like a, a purpley blue. Now, this is a Schaefer school pen with a 304 nib. And these school pens only take refills. You can't put a converter in there. So I want to do two things with this. This is um, a syringe that you can get on eBay. And the sun just got brighter. There's a little bit of glare. And um, these are made for... Um, what are they made for? I'll, t I'll try to find a link. Um, some of them are mentioned that they're made for filling pens. Um, they might be for feeding animals. They're not medical. You can't buy the medical ones like uh, needle syringes. But anyway, if I can find the link, I'll include it. And what you do, this is a used Schaefer cartridge. And this syringe allows me to just refill the cartridge with my own ink. And in my case, I do that because it's just more economical. Um, and also because I mix a lot of my own inks. And sometimes it'll splurt like that. Now, the reason I'm doing that, you can see I have a very good nib for this uh, barrel. But this is kind of a funny story. This is another 304 nib. And this nib, um, I have to check it and make sure it works. I had, two years ago, a pack rat mouse hybrid that was stealing things. Um, and I had a bunch of pen nibs on the floor drying after I had cleaned them. And the silly thing took my pen nib. This is the actual pen nib it took. Um, and there are two marks on it. I've cleaned it three times, don't worry. Um, now, how did I find it again? When when it took it, I said, oh, that that's it, it's gone. It took it off a paper towel and disappeared up behind the oven. And I said, that's it, my nib is gone. I had to buy another nib. Um, I have a new problem. The mice I was always able to relocate. Um, we have a new problem on Cape Cod and in my neighborhood of brown rats, also known as Norway rats. And for the first time in my life, I got to see a rat up close the other day when it was sitting in my hallway. Because rats are different than mice, I had to um, call an exterminator, and we're, I'm going through that right now. But the silly thing is moving through my house, um, through the walls, and I found my pen nib. And it left it at the basement, at the um, next to one of their little trails. And pack rats do that when when they they drop one thing when they find something more interesting. And in this case, it was taking scented candle wax and left my pen nib. And I was going to throw it out because the rats have had it, um, the mice have had it. I mean, it's been in the wall somewhere for two years, moved all through the house, if you can imagine it. Um, but this is kind of a testament to Schaefer because, look at this. It still writes beautifully. So I get a little determined sometimes. Um... It took me months to get to the point where I could say, okay, the pen nib is gone. And to get it back two years later is a little bit uh, miraculous. So now, there is my pen nib 
And what I've done, I'll, I'll probably use it and put it back in here. Rat had this. It's going to have a special little bag because I had gotten a nib to replace it. So those are just a couple of um, ways to fill pens with ink and a way to um, just be aware. I'm not, I don't think mice do a lot of stealing, but if you have any rodents around at all, they tend to like bright, shiny objects. And the reason I'm bringing that up is not really because of the rat story, but um, when I wash a bunch of pen nibs, I put them on a paper towel or a rag, and I generally leave them um, in the kitchen somewhere, either on the floor or on a counter. And that nib, I mean, it just walked up and, and walked away with the nib. And that's a fairly big nib for them to drag away. So they get determined and... Um, on Cape Cod, like I said, the exterminator, the rat guy, is what I'm calling him right now, um, he said Norway rats, brown rats, are becoming a big problem because of all the restaurants that have closed due to COVID. Isn't that fun? So um, keep your eye out there. Um, you know, I, I like mice. <laughs> I did not like this rat when I saw it. Um, there's a whole different reaction to rats. So anyway, take care of your pens, clean your pens. If you leave your nibs out on a rag, um, in my case, all I did was turn around and happen to see the little legs and tail disappearing with my nib. Um, but I wouldn't leave them out overnight anymore. I would leave them out for a half an hour, however long it takes for them to dry, and then put them away. And... Um, Enjoy your pens.